I'm Antoinette coming to you from Deer Island, New Brunswick, and this is 2OG's Hooking and Stitching Island Style. There's been a challenge going around, 20 question challenge, and I thought I'd participate. So here we go. Question number one, what does my name mean? According to the biblical baby names, the name Antoinette means praiseworthy. Antonia is Latin in origin and its meaning is praiseworthy. Antonia is the name of a fortress in Jerusalem. Herod fortified it and named it Antonia in honor of his friend Mark Anthony. Antonia is not named in the Bible. It is just referred to as the castle. Paul also delivered his famous speech describing his vision of Christ from the stairs of the fortress Antonia. My name is a family name. I am named after my mother. Uh, my grandmother, my great-grandmother, my great-great-grandmother. Being of Italian descent, there are various pronunciations of Antoinette, um, various spellings, but they all mean the same thing. Uh, some of the nicknames, um, my mother was called Annette growing up. Um, Tony is also a nickname for Antoinette or Nettie, of which neither I use. I use my name, Antoinette. I am proud of where it originated. Um, and I like my name. Also, there was Marie Antoinette who lost her head when she told them, let them eat cake. All right, on to question number two. Where am I from? Originally, I am from Greensburg, Pennsylvania, which is 40 minutes outside of Pittsburgh. Um, but I grew up in Harrison City, Pennsylvania, which is where I spent probably the majority of my teenage years and early adulthood. But I lived all over. I've lived in Louisiana, Florida, Maine, back to Pennsylvania, and my final stop in life's journey is Deer Island, which is where I need, need to be and want to be and should be. Number three, where was I born? I was born in Verona, Pennsylvania, um, in a little part of it, which was basically like a little Italy. Everybody was Italian. Um, my mother's full-blooded Italian. My father was German and Irish. Um, but mom's family is who I grew up with and the traditions and pretty much made me who I am and gave me my morals and values. So um, Verona is outside of Penn Hills, which I'm probably related to more than half of. So yeah, that's it in a nutshell. What would my parents have named me if I had been a boy, I don't know. Uh, being that I was first born, if I would have been a boy, my mom would have probably wanted to name me after my father. But my father told her that no son of his would be named after him, as he took a lot of ribbing, taunting, bullying, butt whoopings, butt kickings when he was growing up because his mother would go out and holler, Melvin Paul. My dad's name was Melvin Paul. So, and everybody called him Mel. So, the only other name I might have been named would, on my mother's side would have been Joseph after my grandfather, Giuseppe. Uh, Giuseppe Anthony, actually. So, that's that. My biggest accomplishment, that's easy, my two sons, Anthony and Donnie. Um, Anthony is 39 years old, an iron worker in Luzon, California, with his family. He moved out there about a year ago. And it's a little far from me, and, and you know, 4,000 miles, and I wish he was closer. But he has to do what he has to do and take care of his family. And my other son, Donnie, would have been 37 this past March. He passed away five years ago. But those two are my biggest accomplishment and the grandchildren that they gave me. I do have some other accomplishments that I'm proud of. I hold three college degrees in nursing, business administration with a minor in accounting, and that was obtained in my early 40s. And I went back to college again in my late 40s and obtained my RCT certification, which is radiation control technician. And basically that is monitoring the radiation levels in the nuclear plants during outages and when they're changing uh, the refueling process. So I am very proud of that, 
and I also drove tractor trailer or transport, as they say in Canada, for 30 years, of which 27 years I owned my own rig. My husband and I had four trucks when we worked at gas wells in Pennsylvania the last five years before we moved up here, and I retired permanently from trucking. Um, I logged three million safe miles and was quite proud. When I first started, there weren't many women that did it, and let alone have their own rig. And I was proud of my safety record. I was proud of the job I did, and I provided a very valuable service to the United States. And that was moving freight across the country without trucks. America stops, and so does Canada and the rest of the world. All right. Number six, my eye color. Boring brown. No flex, nothing, just boring brown. I used to joke and say it makes um, full of poo-poo up to here. But all the kids in my mom's family have brown eyes. We took after her, the Italian, dark hair, dark eyes, dark complected. Uh, Daddy had blue, green eyes. Number seven, my favorite candle scent. I don't burn a lot of candles. I prefer my wax melt or my infuser. But if I am burning a candle or my wax melt, I like... Fresh scents, magnolia, jasmine, ocean smells, fresh air smells, clean scents. Um, I don't like the food smells, you know, sugar cookie and 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 gingerbread. I don't. They make me hungry, um, but they're too sweet for me. I do like apples and cinnamon during Christmas. Um, I think in the kitchen that's a nice smell. Kind of reminds you of an apple pie being baked. But other than that, it's just French, fresh, well, excuse me, fresh scents. Right now, I'm burning um, Febreze aloe uh, wax melts, and it's just a real clean smell. Okay, on to number eight. Can I cook? Yes, I can, but there was a time. My father told me that he feared that I would never get married or find a husband because I couldn't cook. I literally burned water, but I got married young, right out of high school, had a family, and it was a necessity that I learned to cook, and while I was learning to cook, I discovered I loved cooking, and I cook a lot of Italian, of course, that's what uh, I grew up cooking, you saw my grandmother, my mother, you know, homemade pasta, but Italian's called macaroni, it's all macaroni, um, my homemade sauce, which is based on my grandmother's recipe, and Alfredo and lasagna, raviolis, manicottis, uh, tortellini, you know, all the Italian dishes. Um, eggplant parmesan, zucchini parmesan, a manicotti, and so forth. So yes, I love to cook, and I enjoy cooking. I enjoy seeing the joy that it brings people, and when they have a full belly when they leave my table. Number nine, what is good about my life? Overall, it, my life is good. Um... This has been a rough month because I lost my mother a few weeks ago. Well, it's almost a month now I've lost her. She passed away at uh, the age of 83. But she had a good life, and she is in a better place, and she's happy. Um, I, it was five years this past October that my son was taken, and I miss him every day, but I'll see him again one day. And I'll see Mommy and Daddy and Grandma and Grandpa and and my puppy Valeria that I lost in March, my pit bull, she, she was my constant companion for nine years along with her sister Bella. I still have Bella. She's 10. Number 10, what is my sign? My sign is Aries the Ram. I was born on the 17th of April, which is the cusp of Taurus and Aries. Taurus starts the 18th. So, mom was a Taurus, I was an Aries, and as she used to say, we constantly butted heads according to our signs, but Taurus was usually triumphant. I told her I begged to differ with her. I used to love to argue with her. Number 11. What scares me about aging? Really nothing. Um, it's just part of the cycle of life. Um, I know there's more after this, whatever your beliefs are. Um, I believe there is a final place that you end up at, that is, everything's happy, no sickness, 
you know, you see the members of your family that have passed and gone before you. Um, I look to the women in my mom's family because we, I take after that side mostly, and they all aged beautifully. Um, Alzheimer's dementia wasn't a big factor in the family. Um, they all had beautiful complexions, and I'm hoping that I take after mom's side of the family when it comes to that. But, um, yeah, everything's good in my life. I'm healthy, healthy, happy, have a wonderful husband, a wonderful sister-in-law. We all live together. And we just moved into our brand new house, looking out over the water, which in a later video I will give you a view of from my craft room, which once I finish organizing it, I'll show that too. But yeah, life is good. Number 12, my favorite holiday, Christmas, which is just around the corner. And we're busy getting ready for the community tree lighting here on the island. Uh, we started that tradition four years ago. The tradition of the tree on the corner has been 75 years, but my husband and I added a little bit of uh, a community event to it by having uh, an evening where we give door prizes out and we just, uh, the community congregates, we have cookies and cu cupcakes and baked goods and coffee and hot chocolate and we set the time that we're going to light the tree and as we light the tree we set off fireworks. And everybody looks forward to it every year. It's sort of like the kickoff to the um, Christmas season. And this year we're doing it on December 1st, which is the first night of Advent, which kind of coincides and uh, gives it a great start for the season. Number 13, my favorite show to binge watch. Ooh, um, if I binge watch TV, which I don't watch a lot of TV, but when I do, I enjoy House, The Big Bang Theory, the old 70s and 80s sitcoms. Freeze Company, you know, all the old shows. Um, I love Law & Order, SVU, Criminal Intent, NCIS with Mark Harmon, um, stuff like that. Those are the shows I enjoy. Shows that are just very lighthearted and you can sit and just enjoy with the project or what have you, do mindless crocheting or knitting. Um, I do not like reality TV shows with the exception. I pit bull and parolees and Season of Lawn, I love those two shows. Uh, Nat Geo, um, those kind of channels. But all that reality TV with Desperate Housewives or whatever the show's called, and Big Brother, Big Luke, whatever they're called, I, I don't even pay attention to them. To me, they're just, life needs more positive, more uplifting than the crap that's on TV today. So I'm not upset about that. Number 14, my guilty pleasure. Well, besides yarn, I have to say my guilty pleasure is once a month, uh, Barb and I go to the Sanctuary Salon Spa here on the island. It's just a little place, but the, the owner, Kathy, is wonderful. And we, I'll get my roots touched up because I am, believe it or not, 75% gray. So this is my original color. I've always had long hair. This is the shortest my hair has been in a long time. I cut like nine inches off a couple months ago. But it's easier to take care of it. It's healthy. Um, but we'll get a facial, pedicure, just a couple of hours, girl time, and just indulging and in taking care of ourselves. You know, a little bit of me time. Everybody needs that. You need to take time for you. For a lot of years, I didn't. And at 58 years old, I've started to try and take care of me for a little bit. Okay. Number 15, one thing I can't leave the house without. Car keys. Although it's a push button start, it has to be in the vehicle to get it to start. Um, the other thing is, if I'm working, I gotta have, I have to have my cell phone, which it doesn't work on the island. Our cell service on the island is stinks. It's terrible. I usually hook into a U.S. tire, and they want to charge me roaming and blah blah blah. But if I didn't work, I wouldn't have a cell phone. Um, and the other thing is, I kiss my husband goodbye if he's home. I always kiss my puppy bye-bye and tell her I'll be back soon. And uh, yeah. and if I remember to bring my brain with me, there's mornings I leave the house and I leave my brain right back in bed. But other than that, key, cell phone, and kisses. Number 16, am I a morning person or a night owl? Depends. 
Um, most of the time, I've always been an early riser. Since the day I entered this world, I have always been up by 6 a.m., give or take a few minutes. Uh, it doesn't matter what time I have to go to bed, I am up at 6. I may wake up at 6, go to bed 4, get up at 6, and I may lay back, lay back down for an hour or two. But that's my internal alarm clock, and it has been that way all my life. Um, I've always had a tendency to be a night owl. Um, I used to do my best cleaning at nighttime, and I got that from my mother. Excuse me, I get a drink here. Morning coffee. And um, I got and she would clean at night with raising seven kids. That's pretty much the only time she had to clean. But I enjoy the peace and quiet when I'm by myself. And just knitting and crocheting or watching a YouTube video or a combination of, of the, all the above. So, a little bit of both. Number 17, my favorite genre of movie. I love a tearjerker. Some of my favorite movies are Steel Magnolias, Terms of Endearment, Officer and a Gentleman. So, that kind of gives you a tearjerker love story. Um, a good romantic comedy. Um, something that makes me laugh or makes me feel good, uplifted, positive. I'm a big believer in positive in, positive out, negative in, negative out. I absolutely detest and will not watch horror movies, gory movies. Anything with zombies? No. Um, I think people are obsessed with that. Zombies? I'll pass on that. So, yeah, anything that makes me feel good and is uplifting. And, of course, holiday movies, Christmas movies. They're usually pretty much uplifting. What was the last thing I bought? Hmm. What's that? Oh, groceries. I bought groceries. And uh, the last yarn I had was an order from Spinrite that I ordered in September before my yarn ban as of October 1. Um, but I did not get it till the end of October, beginning of November, as their email stated their computers went down and they were backlogged and they were very nice about it. And I was very pleased. So, yeah, groceries and my last yarn delivery was in end of October. Number 19. Am I an introvert or an extrovert? Um, I don't have any problem in social situations. I'm quite comfortable. But I am not. what I'm not comfortable in is big crowds or if there are people that are obnoxious drunks and stuff like that. I don't do the bar scene. Never really did do the bar scene or stuff like that. I love to dance. And we, when I was younger, I'm talking early 20s, we'd go dancing. I grew up in the disco era. But um, I'm quite content by myself. I am happy just to sit here in my craft room uh, or on the couch with my husband and sister-in-law and puppy. Um church gatherings I am comfortable in small gatherings quite at ease and I can strike up a conversation I believe in being polite and civil to people um, which is lacking nowadays I detest going to the mainland and going to St. John the big city there to do shopping because people are in a hurry and pushy and rude there's no common decency anymore there's no you know, please, thank you, you're welcome, may I help you, everything, it's the me generation, I guess, I don't know, I guess I'm old school, I'm old, period, um, but I uh, am quite content by myself, but I can also be in a social situation without any problem, all right, and the final question is number 20, my favorite book. I have to say that it's been a while since I read a book. Um, I mean, I pick my Bible up and read it. Um, but as far as a book, I used to be an avid reader of romance novels and uh, biographies. But I kind of got away from that when YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and life in general got in the way. But one of my 
plans for my summer retirement, which is hopefully in the next five years, is to start reading one book a month. If I don't read a book, I am going to listen to audiobooks, which I used to listen to all the time when I was driving. So that's one of my, my goals. So, yeah. I hope that gave you a little bit of insight into a little bit more about who I am, where I came from, what I like, what I don't like, and, you know, yada, yada, yada. I would like to tag a few people. I would like to tag Leslie Arnold Hopkins from the Never Quite Enough Yarn podcast. And I will put her link in the description box below. I would also like to tag a new from a new crochet design. Now, she's a big channel and she doesn't even know who I am, but through the grapevine and this great community we have, knitting and crocheting community, maybe someone will say, hey, you know, I heard you mentioned in a video from the little itty bitty, hardly there channel um, about the 20 question challenge. So, who knows? I would also like to tag Petra from Foxy Creations. Um, check her cha check all these channels out. They're great channels. And the last one that I would like to tag is Jay from Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam. She has the most infectious laugh. And I really enjoy listening to her. So, if you haven't done it, hop on the bandwagon. Get to know the makers, the podcasters. We need to get to know each other because it's a wonderful community. And try to keep the positivity going. And I will see you in the next installment of Two OGs Hooking and Stitching Island Style. And as we say on the island, see you, Cap. <laughs>